Ugh, I can feel it! It's gross! Hello, hello everyone. It is I, Riva Estrella, and today we're playing Stillwater. Oh. Yeah, like I said, we're playing Stillwater. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about this game, I just kind of said, hey, looks kinda interesting, let's play it. Anyways, this is a work of fiction. The resemblance to any real-life people is purely coincidental. This game contains depictions of horror, mature themes, violence, and strong language. Y'all have been warned. Caretaker, uh, how do I- I can't do voices right now. I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Uh, okay, Nina's voice. Calm down. If we could just talk it out. One strange thing keeps happening after another. Every day there's this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but... I checked very frequent. Every ceiling. Every pipeline. And still! Still, I can hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Dot dot dot. Oh, but the water. <laughs> but the water. <laughs> I find random pools of water just appearing out of nowhere, just like the dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. Oh, what do you mean? Da da dots. I don't care if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallway, walking on the pools of water. They walk, and they walk. Oh, sorry, I just started reading and I forgot to adjust some things. Anyways, this probably looks better. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyways. They walk, and they walk, upstairs, then downstairs. Oh, what the heck? I can't read this fa- And upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs and downstairs and downstairs and downstairs and blah blah blah. And it goes on and on and on and on like this. Or like that. I can't read. But somehow it does come to an end. And it ends all in front of your grandfather's room. Dot dot dot. I know that this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The woman on the phone cautiously looked around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Oh my, oh my, hold on, let me move myself real quick. I am now down here. Anyways. Something terrible is lurking through this house. I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. <clears throat> I can't just leave. That is my house. Please, Nina, this place, it's not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like that. Like this. Dot dot dots. It's my home. It's my home. <laughs> Spooky. Mm, dinner time. Or diner place. Whatever thing. Amid, amidst a foggy morning, there sits a man by the corner of a booth. He drinks black coffee and, depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. Mmm. And today, it was just black coffee, I guess. Homie's not in the mood then. Homie looks like you're done with life. Ugh. I swear I never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. It's freaking mountains worth of it. You're a valuable member of our team, Hugo. My foot. <laughs> I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their, their agency. <sighs> Hugo uh, Laurent, age 30, takes a good look at his coffee of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. Oh. Homie must be struggling. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night's uh, gr grueling work at the office. I really need to find a different job. As he contemplates his life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. There's something in the mist! Anyways, there was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him. How it's engulfed everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. Proof of its remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't ever run away from my fate, I guess. He finally stares at the compiled newspaper clipped in his 
in his put together and some of them from recent events and mainly all were past headlines of missing people's cases no matter how many times i see it it's still just as hard to look at fixating cases after cases he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this an all too personal reason seeing strange things come through with a price in the end i'm the one doing this to myself Sounds rough, mind if I join you? In annoyingly familiar voice interrupted his train of thought, he slowly looked up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. Ooh, hello! Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, good morning, Hugo. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. He then gathers the files and shoves it back into the, the, the binder. I was about to say blinder, what? Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an initiative and sits at the opposite end of the booth. Booth. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special with an extra plate. As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to relay his order. The man looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and the now jumbled newspaper clippings all the the while hugo is trying to ignore him you really should eat something with the black coffee not ordering any donuts today i'm fine noah i'm just not in the mood today not even a little mm. there's a momentary silence between them before noah disturbs it once more oh too bad for you i ordered a big breakfast for the two of us two Ooh, that looks pretty good! As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrived. Why the hell did you order for the two of us? Just eat what you want to eat. Don't worry about me. Wow, this looks so delicious, right, Hugo? Are you even listening to me? Come on, we both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will, and I'm not about to let you faint again. Again. So open wide. Noah de Leon. Noah de Leon? Noah, but Noah de Leon, I think that's how you say it. Age 27. A natural born charmer is just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. Oh my. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love me some breakfast. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. It's good. It's good, yeah! Right? Good food would always help cheer you up. Damn him! I got swept away again! <laughs> oh, by the way, the chief will be out for business trips. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. What's she doing? When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Mm, yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about a business trip. I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. Da da da. You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically have the day off. I'm gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get a chance to sort out. Dude, just relax. You don't gotta do work. You could do that later. In that case, I'll come with you. You know, with some help, it's pretty good. Pretty pog. Okay, do it. Why... You could just rest for the day. And pass up this opportunity to get to know you better? Quit it. After their enlightening banter, the two of them finished their breakfast, paid for their orders, and head to Hugo's car. You know, these two are quite funny. I quite like the dynamic. I can't, I can't words. As Noah opened the door to the passenger seat, he, not he notices a bloodhound sleeping aside. A, a doggy? A doggy! It's a cute doggy! I love doggies. The big dog stirs at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Ah, I'm sorry, big guy. He then closed the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb the occupant. Colby. Oh, the eyes! It's so cute! Okay, my voice is cracking. I need water. At the sound of his name, his heavily lidded eyes slowly peeked to she who called for him. It is his one and only partner, his human. That's cute. Aww. As if finally realizing who it is or where it is, the old bloodhound stirs up from his seat, bounces at Hugo, and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Uncon so cute. Bark. 
Good morning again, Colby. Had a nice nap. Colby. Eight years old. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime. Has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. Understandable, my dogs do the same thing. Noah, who was witnessing all of this from the seat, from the, the back seat, chuckled to himself. He is amazed and slightly uh, defeated at Hugo's sudden uh, surge of energy. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times I try. When it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Colby. I mean, it's a dog. What do you expect? Any any cute fluffer will make anyone slightly happy. My chair squeaks too often. The three headed back to the office. The space just the same as Hugo left it. A decent, organized mess. Oh my. I mean, I uh, look at my my surroundings. Yeah, I have a similar thing. Anyways. To his credit, the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. Albeit, could have done better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks less crowded. I skipped it a little bit, but I managed to catch it. Ah, shut up, will you? I said I was gonna get to it. Oh, thanks, boy. Before Hugo could continue to give deserved head pats, he noticed someone. A woman standing timidly peering out outside from the storefront. The woman appeared a bit frantic. What's going on? Disheveled and wearing ill-fitted clothes, she appears to be distressed about something. What's going on? When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushed in. Are you okay? I I'm sorry. I know that the clothes sign is up, but I saw you came in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help. My grandfather. He... Before she can continue, Noah swiftly intervened. Oh my, it's okay, we'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestured to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitated for a moment before heavily sighing in relief. What's going on? She then walks towards the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Can you start off by telling us your name? Mm. I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina Mortimer. Mortimer, I can't read names. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Watching over your grandfather? Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? Uh, I'm afraid he is. Miss mm. Mortimer, I'm pronouncing that so wrong. If that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No! I've tried requesting their help, but they all gave me the same answer. There's nothing they can do about it. If only I knew who Lewis was. Lewis? Nina fidgeted at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out for um, her bag for an, inti for an antique letter. Reading, I can't. It didn't came with an address or the name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was that name. As she handed over the letter, Hugo noticed her hands slightly shaking. Whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removed the contents of the, the envelope and, f and unfolded it. At first glance, it seemed like a normal written message. A person named Louis asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight, needing to share something important with him. However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. Wah! I'm coming for you, Henry. Ooh, no, that does not sound good! Were there any other letters like this? Yes, a few of them. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but this one... This one was different! Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. Not a relative or a family friend! But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I'll lose... I'll lose him too. Oh, she's crying. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina broke down. Hiding away her tear-stricken face, she began to quietly sob to herself. Oh. As an act of comfort, Colby sat closely to Nina while Noah fetched tissues for her. Oh, dog, you're doing a good thing, man. Some dogs always make me feel better if I'm gonna be tearing up a little bit, you know? Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever or whatever this Lewis person is, they're coming. Don't you want more tissues? I'll do it. I'll take on your case. For a moment, silence filled the room. 
only stares are directed at Hugo until Nina finally stood up, or stands up, and walks towards him. You'll take it? Hugo simply nodded. Thank you, thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. We're glad to help, miss. Nina, Nina is fine. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiled at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. I'm guessing that's the address, yeah. This is my address. I'll be sure to greet you once you get there, detective. Detective, I can't read. Um, she politely bowed once more before heading to her car and leaving uh, back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turned to look at his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later. Again. Car. Oh, it's raining. You know, I like the smell. Is it? Like, I know I'm not the only one because I'm pretty sure that many people agree. My sister agrees with me about this. But like, when when it stops raining, the after the aftermath smell is really nice and like oddly just relaxing. Like, like I'm sure some people probably don't like it, but me, I quite like it, man. It's quite nice. For the ongoing downpour to the quiet hums of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rear, the rear view mirror. Noah, who usually chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. He looked out to the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Dot dot dots. Hey, you're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong? Dot dot dots. Eh, <laughs> this is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot. You usually just talk a lot, that's all. So, do you miss me talking a lot? Dot dot dot. Just say it. I don't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. But it's her last name that caught me off guard. Oh, is there some baggage that I'm not aware of? Or some coincidental thingy? Is it like some past events that was titled to the- to Mortimer? Timer? The Mort time Is it Mortimers? Mortimers! Fudge! That's how you pronounce it, isn't it? I was too lazy to Google it. I say Mortimers. <laughs> is it Mortimer? F I'm an idiot! Have you heard about the Mortimers? They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. What do you mean? They've been stuck with so many tragedies that over time people began to believe they were cursed or something. Every other year, I would see headlines on the local news about one of the family members' deaths. And you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled an accident. Hey yo, no foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understood why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they would perceive her as paranoid or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. I can't imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, particularly. I'm more worried about you, though. Hmm? Think of it this way. I'm the appointed driver! When you decided to do some pretty reckless shat, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. You know, understandable, we always need that one driver. You know, when you're going out, like, I'm probably, me, I don't drink often, but if I were to, I'd probably be the designated driver, always playing the role, but rather than, like, Hugo getting blackout drunk, Hugo's just dealing with the, uh, with some, 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 some stuff that we don't even know yet, honestly. Uh. Besides, Two are better than one. Always right. Exactly. I'm fine with Colby coming with me. <laughs> okay. Dot dot dot. Well, have you heard of three is better than two? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, the more the merrier, you know. More people to outrun. <laughs> That's mean. Um, passing through countless dirt roads and uh, uh, steep cliffs, uh, uh, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. I read that so weird. Nestled and tucked away from the praying eyes and standing tall. Pr pray, praying, praying words, yes. Looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the, the sheer scale of the, the manor as they uh, parked adjacent to Nina's car. Wow. And to think she came all this way just to request us. It took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Hmm. Maybe she really didn't have a choice? What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Oh my, what the heck? Why did everything turn shaky and more dark dark aesthetic? Immediately after exiting the, the driver's seat, a sudden sharp pain weighed heavily on, on Hugo's chest. Oh my. Grasping tightly at his coat, he began to gasp for air. His gaze hazed as he leaned close to the car. You good, bro? 
Like a fish drawn out from the sea, he desperately heaved. But this achy harbor paled in comparison to the pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No, something- I clicked! He feels it. Something is watching him. A piercing gaze fixing on him. Let's look at the background. Do you guys see anything? Mm, nope. So yeah, something's gazing at him. We just don't know what. Like leering at a at a bug and waiting to strike. I'll never forgive you. What? What the hell? Darn it already. I need to hurry or else. Hey, are you all right? Noah called out to him, snapping him out of his f uh, fixated trance. Ducky. Kobe nudged his head against Hugo, wh whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Did you hear that just now? Hear what? That voice. It was so close to my ear, I- Is everything alright? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I just a bit winded from the, the trip, that's all. I'd be happy to make you coffee at the very least. If it's no trouble. No, not at all. It's the least I can do. Once again, the the subtle uneasiness from Nina surface 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 surface. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further into it, she walked off towards the front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're all right? You sounded like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me. I think you should. Noah abruptly cuts his. Lecture short as he noticed Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently, as if contem uh, contemplating something. I, I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. Okay, his assistant Colby. And I'm his second assistant, Noah de Leon. Noah de, de I can't read. But yes, huh, it seems so surreal. It's like a cartoon. <laughs> a Scooby and the gang. Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Laurent. Hmm? Just like before, as if carefully choosing her next words, she decided that in this situation, words are not enough. You'll see for yourself what I mean. What's going on? And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three of them standing. Uh, I mean, following. Standing, following, behind. Yes. Hugo is about to enter through the foyer before he feels a tug on his arm. Don't forget what I tell you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the doors. Okay. Greeted with a mm, brightly lit hallway, Hugo no notes that the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accents and antique paintings, it excludes an elegant charm found only in a resplendent house such as this. However, Hugo noticed something even more distant than the sp splen splen bleh bleh. This house is much more terrifying inside than out. Please, come this way. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason for all of Nina's unsettling vague vagueness. Grandfather, we have guests. Oh my! Homie's eyes are kind of pretty, though. <laughs> pretty, but in a creepy way. Anyway, sorry. Um, Sitting on the armchair is a young man. Young. Wait. Why is it backing out? I was going to say something, but it's backing out. Why are you backing out? Um, he is dressed in a white collar down uh, dress shirt, uh, tucked in with black... Yeah, yeah, just describing the appearance. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there, uh, da dazed with little acknowledgement of the people around him. This is the grandfather? So yeah, still motion motionless like a doll. Gra That's your grandpa! That's your gr- That's your grandpa? Homie looks good for his age, what? I don't believe it. Anyways, grandpa, these are the people I spoke of. This is Detective Lawrence and his two, assist and his two assistants, Colby and, and Noah. They're going to help us. That's your grandpa. 
I just I can't what even after introducing them to the to the heads of the uh, Mortimer's uh, estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel un uh, unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and old than any of them, and yet there he remains, forever unchanged, forever young. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. I don't know how to feel. Homie look good. Look kind of creepy, and he's an old ass man. What? <laughs> I am confusion. They, they came. Uh, they came a long way. So I'll be making some coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? Henry. Okay. A young man. St the young man still does not reply back. I am so lost! <laughs> Never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room. Only fixed on the rain. Huh. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. She then timidly gestured to Hugo and Noah back to the four, four year. Four year. Uh, bearing more questions, the two follow Nina outside. But before they, they leave the, the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air, air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes. They're similar to his own. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. Nina, that man. Yes, he's my grandfather, the one I asked you to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but Nina draws something out from her bucket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slick back hair, wearing a luxurious suit. It appears to be a poised po poised and refined. I can't read. It completely contrasts to the curtain Henry. This is him! Okay. This isn't much to go by, but I swear, he is the same person. Then why does he look so young? <laughs> His face! It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground. I came to help him up, but when I did, he looked so different. So many things were rushing in my head, and yet he felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandfather wore that night. And his face! I recognized his face! He just looked younger! That was also the same night I found the letter. It was next to him, already open. I'm sorry again for all of this. No matter who I went to, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the dripping sounds, the letter, and now this! Maybe my family really is cur- They're not. Curses aren't real. Are you sure about it? Detective? I think we easily get too involved in believing the sort of things exist. That these sort of things exist. That, that sort of stuff. In reality, the one who fixated on, the, on it feeds off of it. Rumors, doubts, lies. All of these things are what they want to become real. Okay. Deep-rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. Uh, personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. But I assure you, we'll see this through. For you and your grandfather. Thank you. Good. Now, our first priority is to find out more about, uh, Lu Louis. Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency, do you still have it with you? Uh, yes, it it's here. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course. I'll check upstairs. Noah, you and Colby check the, the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their own investigations, Hugo grabbed a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leaned in close enough for Nina not to hear. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. Okay. I'm counting on you. Logie! You too, boy. And with that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knows his findings would eventually lead him uh, here. Here it is. Or this is it. Hugo walks towards the nearest lampshade and, op and op opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavish this part of the house is. From customized drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here exudes the extravagance. 
But much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he found this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is molding despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here for too long. Found anything? He searched and searched, still with no sight of anything. Signs of anything. Okay. Not one thing pertains to Lewis. Darn it, nothing, man. It only looks mad as mad. <laughs> mad as mad. I can't words today. It's as if he cleared out everything. Just blank everywhere. No. It has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is the only proof Lewis exists so far. I'll try to read it again. Maybe I overlooked it. As he took the letter out from the envelope, he noticed a change within. Bearing no foreboding threats, at the bottom of the page, it looks like a regular letter. What the? If you can't come, then I understand it's pretty dreary after all. After all. Ah, but if I can ask one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Louis. What? What's going on? This is the same Louis? I thought he was the cause of all of this. I don't understand. Without warning, the sound of a click can be heard. A crushed bedroom. As if something unlocked itself. Hugo turned around and see the, see at the foot of the bed a chest. Unlike the other furnitures, its dark and rusted feature features had not been uh, maintained well, left to rot on its own. Preparing himself, he opened the chest. Inside, scrambled together a bunch of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continued to rummage through when he stumbled across an old newspaper article. Young man found dead by the lake. Oh no. An unidentified young man was found on the morning of the that three days prior to his death, according to the police. Ruled out as a suicide, police had claimed that the troubled youth drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event, uh, someone commented. No claim of his body has been made yet. Lewis. By the corner of Hugo's eyes, he spotted a bright glint burn burned beneath the clutter. What? Each, he checked for it. Oh, a locket of brightly golden shine, unblemished, restraining to timeless luster. I can't read. Inside is safeguarded a picture of a young man with glasses, smiling brightly. They do look quite happy, don't they? This must be the locket that he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture, did he put it here? No, it might have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? Take the lock and leave the lock. Ooh, I don't know, man. I feel like it would be some bad juju if we take it. But it could be useful. Let's. 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 Let's take it. Frick it. I should probably hold on to it for now. Hugo is about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his like, Ew! Ew! I don't like that! I don't like- Ew! I can feel it! It's gross! Ew! Don't make a sound! What? I'm sorry if I was loud. I didn't mean it. Okay, water. A pool of water resently spread across the floor, already seeping into the chest. Damn it! No! Suddenly the light should- I am concerned. A scream is heard following- by a... a shout? What's happening? Hugo is about to call out to Noah, but stopped at the sight of a pale feet behind- a oh, WHAT?! <laughs> Looming over him, standing in a tall and an ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotions. What? It appears as a young man, but Hugo knows that it's far from it. No, this is the very thing trying to- imitate a human form, trying to be human. Hugo could only stare back. Paralyzed with fear, he is forced to watch the horror as it slowly peeks towards him. It just- I don't- 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 uh, um, Okay, please stop there, okay. 
it just it just it just, <laughs> I can't read. It's just like before, the sensation of someone staring at him from uh from within, but this time, it's drawing near ne nearer. Ew, inching ever ever so close. The words to call out to Colby or no or Noah failed to reach out. Locked in his throat, he struggled in pain. With this breathing shall with his breathing shallowing. He tries to force his body to move. And then it's- a, I mean, I'm getting a little like, freaking like, the hairs in the back of my neck kind of raising a little bit. I don't like this. Um, and then it stops. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and con- and contempt, it speaks. Oh, uh, 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 what? I didn't even get a chance to read what it said! All of a sudden, the door to the bedroom slams shut. And Entry disappears and in, in, into something. The, te the tension from his body finally releases in uh, an agon uh, grasp, and he gasps desperately from air. Man, when it comes to me free being freaked out, I kind of my reading becomes even more worse. His vision blurred and breathing jagged. He he stagged he staggered towards the door. Reading, he yanked on the handle several times, but it tightly jammed. Frick. Noah, Colby. To his dismay, he is only greeted with silence at the at the under end of the door. Damn it! Was it bad to have got the locket? From a distance, he faintly heard the sound of Colby, uh, re re rentless barking as it gets further away from the house. What's up? Hugo rushed towards the window. He tries to pry pry it open, but still, like the door, a heavily force prevented him from doing so. Frick this! Frantically looking around the room, he spotted a nearby chair. Without a moment uh, sooner, Hugo grabbed the chair and started to strike the window. Bit by bit, the window cracked uh, from, lar from larger with each blow, sp split splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made of? Bulletproof glass, maybe? <laughs> Probably not. Still trying to catch his breath, he mustered all the strength he has lifted from a final blow. Darn it, just break already. Clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo peered his head out to see any ra railings he could grab a hold of. However, he discovered instead that the wall uh, adjusted to cover in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain had drastically became, he rushed out of it, grabbing a handful of the, of the vines. Carefully, he climbed out the window, gripping tightly and making sure he wouldn't lose his footing. Yet to his luck, the patch of vines he clutched started to tear away from the walls. Out of desperation, he struggled to find uh, his grip on another, but failed when- uh, did, did he fail then? SHAT! Uh, yeah, he fell. <laughs> yeah, he fell and is probably in pain. Air forced out of him, he heaved uncontrollably, trying to ev even out his breathing. But even that is laborious. An immense pain spread across not only his back, but his entire body. Gosh, I'm getting too old for this. Although his body screams out in pain, he forced himself up. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With scattering feet and haggard breathing, he made his way to the place where it all started. To the lake where the tragedy started and ended. So much is going on. I don't even know if getting the locket was a good idea, man. I'm kind of still concerned. Finally entering through the park, Hugo called out to Colby and Noah. Colby! Noah! Where are you? <laughs> I said, that's so dumb. He hears faintly the sound of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushed towards the echoes, guiding him through the, the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing uh, to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to his grandfather. Unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa! Let me go! My grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt too. I don't care. I I don't want to lose anyone anymore. It is at that instant Hugo trud trudged against the water, pursuing uh, in Nina's stead. Hugo? No, don't. Doggy. See, even the dog doesn't want to. Please fall death to his ear. Not even the, the whines or worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudged further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and disheveled, as if all of the life has been drained from him. 
surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reached out and tugged at his arm. Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please come back to the to the, to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he still stared deep into the water. There are so many things we can't afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them. To Nina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo felt it. A slight jolt from Henry, Henry's arm, as if stirred by the mention of Nina. Why does homie look kind of pretty though? Sorry, he's an old man. He's an old man, remember that. He slowly turned to face Hugo. Nina? However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerked back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo hold, hold on him. All of this is my fault. If only, if only I got to Lewis sooner, then none of this would have happened. Henry inches even closer to the edge. Lewis, I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lewis. I... I read what he wrote to you those years ago. Uh, he understood if you didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Lewis never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Lewis's locket? Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. Ah, that explains the forever yours. I was I thought it was just like like homies being homies, but no, it was a little more than that. That's kind of cute. Ah, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why you don't have to shoulder off all that pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Lewis. All of it. Together. Ooh! Homie's eyes were turned. Hugo extended not only his hand to him, but a promise. A promise that Hugo has yearned for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitated at first. What fool believes in a deserved forgiveness? Such as things doesn't exist. And yet, despite everything... Hugo still reached out to him, to a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach for Hugo, a hand slithered around Hugo's instead. What? Oh my, that's not, that's not good. Its arm unnaturally contorted around him, while its head perched on his shoulder. Honestly though, homie still look kind of pretty despite having a ghost on him. At least I think that's a ghost. This thing. This... Lewis is no longer pretending to be human. With piercing cold green eyes, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved? We can be forgiven? <clears throat> this is the only true way out of this. I will share with you the most happiest- I can't read. What? Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he, di he, he disappeared into the water. What? Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and dis uh, desperate pleas, Hugo dra uh, dra dra dives after him. Into the abyss! Plunging into icy water, Hugo feels shocked uh, running rampant throughout his body. Like spikes continuously piercing from his leg to the tips of his fingers. Uh, fiercely and unyielding, his chest tightening and his heart racing as he began to kick his legs, hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees faintly a figure slowly descending into the darkness. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretched over the, the, the veil and grabs uh, Henry's neck. Why are you grabbing my neck? Or his neck? Violently squeezing all the air uh, out from him. Bish! He tries desperately to wrestle his hands away. But with each struggle, Hugo's movements begin to weight heavily and heavier. Lewis. Where are you, Lewis? It's looking for Lewis? Digging deeper into his coat pocket, he grips tightly into his hand the locket that Henry kept and had long forgotten. Holding it out at- So it was a good idea to bring it, that's good. Holding it out as it shines even so bright in the darkness. Da da dots. Ah, uh, there you are. Ooh, it's calming down. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he, he drops the chain and kicks with all his um, might to grab Henry's arm. 
With his heart a burning and body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there. I just have to. As the light from the surface began to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Before losing his consciousness, he noticed a figure swimming towards them, getting closer and closer. Ooh, we're getting some backup. And then everything faded to black. We don't even know what time it is or where we're at or some. Drifting along with what feels like an endless uh, sea, Hugo courses through waves after waves, not knowing where he's going or caring for what for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he had a good night rest? Ah, it's been so long. Maybe I should take the rest now. I'd like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not now. Mm. I'm sorry for startling you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Louis? You've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cried out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. We're at the lake. Still. With his eyes closed and his senses all returning, he, s he feels the... C the he feels the constant tugs and licks of a certain bloodhound. Ah! Hi, Colby. Whining and he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo! He also hears another familiar voice. Too annoyingly close for comfort. Eyes shot right open. He jerks up. Confused, Hugo looked around before he coughed out the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah started to pat his back while... Uh, while Colby continues to whine over Hugo. Oh, What happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of, thank goodness? I swear, you don't listen to a damn word I say. I'm sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he lets out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively when someone approaches them. Detective Laurent. Oh, Nina. There's someone I want you to meet. Oh, he's an old man again! So looks pretty good. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Behind, behind her stands an elderly man. Frail in stature, he timidly looks to the side pensively as he ponders to himself. Although his youth has long faded, his eyes is what catches Hugo's attention. They're no longer a piercing and vigorous green. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I... I never got the chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Lewis lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I drugged everyone down. And I kept hurting not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her, the one to blame for all of this. But you... Someone that I have never met still went out of their way to save me. Not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reached out to Henry and smiled brightly at him. It's my pleasure, sir. But before he let go, Henry tugged on Hugo's hand one last time. I hope that someday you too will overcome it. Eh? Hmm. Overcome what? The next day. Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. Morning. <laughs> With much haste, Hugo resumed writing on his notepad. Although, by closing inspection, he looked like he's going to combust any minute. Are you writing up the report? Without looking up, Hugo responded back. Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours, too. I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet... And I don't like eating by myself. <laughs> Do you brought the breakfast over? Be like, I got delivery. <laughs> Let me guess. Two is better than one. Bingo. Wow, Hugo. You're really catching on. I'm so proud of you. Ah, oh, shut up, will you? I swear, if only I had fallen off with the gosh darn window, maybe my report would have been shorter. Before Noah could begin to cut the bacon, he paused at the mention of Hugo's report. Oh yeah, by the way... Mind telling me what happened to the mortuary's window? Uh, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is, why is it broken? Did you know how much it costs to repair a window like that? I know, I know. I was really dumb- it was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. But also the bill. And, surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You can't just call it a day after all of that. Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it. You pay for it. Could you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. But each time I keep insisting, he just shrugs it off. Said that we already went through a lot for them. So this was nothing in comparison. Ugh. You know what? He's right. After all that we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. Kobe follows after him. Oh, Wait, what about the breakfast? I'll eat it later. It's nap time now. <laughs> Emily sighing. Noah sits aside the food on his desk and joins the other two on the couch. Aw, they all be napping. Aw, they all be napping. Ugh, I'm getting old. I mean, you are old. Shut up. Kobe whines asking for head scratches. Oh, so cute. Oh, sorry, boy. Silently, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ear as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad that you came along yesterday. Mm? Oh, what's this? Are you getting chummy with me now? Calling it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. If you haven't saved us back there. Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shat. Inside, besides, I couldn't read! Good thing there's a logbook. Besides, didn't you say this was a nap? Nap time? Get some rest. You deserve it. You too. And look at them! That's so wholesome. <laughs> the calm silence filled the room as the three fall deeply into sleep. No big parties or celebrations. Just each other's comfort and sharing the small and rewarding uh, night's rest. Honestly, I don't- I, I- I agree completely. I don't like parties. If- if- if we could, if I could just get into a cuddle puddle with a bunch of people that are just like- that need- that just need to like sleep for a bit, that's quite comforting enough. Quite a- a good celebration in my book. Good ending, the night's rest. Like, oh, uh, I really liked this game. It was actually quite nice. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the characters. I liked- like, I liked how they spoke with each other. I want to get the bad ending though. <laughs> You know me, always want to get the bad ending. Okay, we're getting the bad ending. We're gonna leave the locket, and now we have to zoom past this. Is there any way to skip? No skipping, so we... I gotta frantically click. Give me a moment. Oh, we still look so fine, and for what? I... I've had enough. Louis is waiting for me. He's waiting for me to come home. What? Well, before Hugo could reach out uh, for Henry's hand, he disappeared into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate, desperate plead, Hugo dived in after him. Into the abyss! Okay, so since we don't have the locket now, how will this change things? Plunging into the icy water, stuff like that, you know, trying to reach out for... Okay, okay, this is probably where the dialogue might change. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the 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 void and grabbed a hen Hugo's neck, neck, violently squeezing all the air out of him. He tries desperately to reach his hand away, but with each struggle, Hugo's movement began to to weigh heavily, heavier and heavier. Water filling his lungs and his vision starting to blur. The cold numbness spreads. Tired and motionless, he watched as he watched on as the abyss draws near, swallowing him, embracing him. Let's share this happy ending together. Oh no! So that was the ending. It was just a mer the mermaid tale. Huh. 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 Okay, I checked. Those were like the only two endings, I think. Huh. Well, that was interesting. I really liked that. That was that was still water, you know, snow water. That was that was that was quite interesting. I really liked it. I. So. So the grandfather had a past love, which was Lewis, and but Lewis ended up dying in the in the lake. Lewis, because of the the unwanted, because like Lewis didn't want to leave Henry, he becomes like this monstrous mermaid creature. I'm believing, and because of that, it leads to weirdness happening around the the estate of the the Mortimers, the Mortimers, and. 
weird stuff keeps happening to the point where like even Henry like he, his age turns back to like when Lewis first dies and like basically Lewis is basically just being like hey Henry come back to me and Henry's like I want to come back to you goes to the lake to also die so by bringing the lock in not only do we manage to save ourselves and like Lewis and like Henry but we also like probably brought back Lewis's like good side making Lewis you know not an evil mermaid thing and also we helped uh henry out and also lewis out because by pointing out hey death death is really sad and you will make nina really sad so henry's like you right i shouldn't die and lewis is like you right henry you should live the rest of your life i love you we'll meet again one day but for now vibe and then us the protagonists were basically you know we're trying our best i f i don't know why but i kept on getting the vibe that the protagonist also has some like baggage from the past that also he can't forgive himself for but i i don't know maybe but anyways i man i really enjoyed it man i really liked i really liked hugo i really liked noah nina she was a sweetheart she was just trying to to, to like protect her grandfather henry henry looks really good when he's <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry uh i kind of feel bad that henry lost lewis but they will you know he still has the locket and one day they will re reunite i'm sure but like yeah we managed to help him that's that's great i really liked it and also colby best doggy anyways i probably recapped everything a little bit horribly if i edited it and if if i check back in my editing and i was like a little stupid with most of the things i say maybe i'll, I'll try to fix it. i don't know but anyways have a good day don't die on me you might become a locked monster kind of thing i don't know uh have a good day goodbye mm -hmm.